Hey guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use a chi-square p-value test to, to determine what to do with the null hypothesis. This is really different from the whole standard error of the mean thing that we talked about in the other video where you divide standard deviation by the number of observations. Totally different test, but for the same purpose of figuring out what to do with the null hypothesis. So this is one method, right? Your standard error of the mean method that we did in the other video. And then you have the chi-square value with the p-value test to, to also determine what to do with the null hypothesis. So let's, let's explain what we've got here. So for the reason we would use um, the standard error of the mean test is if we're just dealing with one variable. In the other video, we talked about height and how if, we're deter if we wanna see if the, there's a significant difference between the class this year and the class last year in height, then we can actually just take a, we can take one measurement of the whole class and that would basically just be the mean height of, uh, of the class and compare that with the old mean height of the class and that is just one variable compared to one other variable but if we get any more complex than that then we need to use the chi-square value here's an example now in let's suppose we have a religion class or something where it's a fairly small class right well it looks like we only have about 40 or 60 students or so in the class then we want to compare grade distribution if the professor is concerned about the class maybe he wants to see if if he's if he, this year he's made, this new year he's made the class material too hard, and it looks like, you know, we have more A's here, more B's here than last year, and, and fewer C's here than last year. So we need a way to compare multiple variables, and the chi-square value is, or the chi-square p-value test is, is a way of doing that. But we need to go from one to the other. We need to start with the chi-value, we need to go get a p-value from that, and then we can figure out what to do with the null hypothesis from there. So it's a very sequential thing, and remember that. So let's say we have these three variables, right? Your, your distribution of A's and B's and C's, and we need to use the chi-square equation to figure out what our value is. So, so remember that we're all, just, we're all just trying to get down to a number, a very simple number to where we can determine if, if this new class maybe just has it too easy or if they're too smart for their own good. So let, let's start um, calculating that. So remember that this, this epsilon means the sum of, of multiple variables, right? And in this case, we're, we're adding together um, multiple cases of this value right here. So this is observed value. So for, for the A's, let's start with A's. So for the observed, we would say 21 because that's what we're currently observing. Now, maybe we would expect if, if everything had stayed the same, if all the variables had stayed the same from last year, that our expected would be 17 students to get an A in the class. So that's our expected value. So now we divide that by our, our oops, our expected value. Okay. And then the same thing with the Bs. So we're gonna add here add this value, so here's one value. And since we're doing epsilon, right, we need to add multiple values. So here's our second one, we're doing 37, our observed B, number of Bs at the end of the semester was 37, but last year we had 31, so that was our expected for this year, and then 31. And here we do, and go ahead and calculate this with me. I'm gonna do this live. This is meant for you to work with me. And our C's are 16, or nine minus 16 squared, and then divide that by 16. Okay, now let's do the math here. So for our A's, we have 21 minus 17 squared, divided by 17, and that is nine, excuse me, 0.94. Let me just make sure I did that right. 21 minus 17 squared divided by 17. Okay, yeah. All right, so for your Bs, same story, 37 minus 31 squared divided by 31. That's 1.16. And then for our last one, we have nine minus 16 squared divided by 16 and that's three points oh well yeah just 3.1 okay perfect 
So then 3.1 plus 1.16 plus 0.94, you're gonna have, and this is your chi-score value of two, 5.2. <laughs> Getting a little dyslexic and trying to say this right here, but so your chi-score value, remember that this x squared actually, it doesn't mean x squared, this is just a symbol for chi-squared. This is your chi-squared value. So what do you do once you have your chi-squared value? Now you need to use that, it, in of itself, the chi-score value doesn't mean anything. You need to find a p-value. So really, the chi-square value is helping you find your p-value, and, and you can do that based on two things. So to find it, you need, okay, your chi-square, I'll write that here. So you need your chi-square, right, need, need your chi-square value, and you need an n, your number of observations. Both of these will change your p-value, okay? Um, you don't have to know why for this class, but you do need to know that that will change. Okay, um, and that's all based off of this guy, the, the p-table. So you need to find your p-value somewhere in this table, and the way you do that, we've kind of brushed over this in class a little awkwardly, I think a few times, and that's, I think, why a lot of you have been confused. The TAs explain it differently from the professor and vice versa, and, and, and in general, it's just a confusing subject. So uh, you need to find your p-value. That's what that's the whole point of the p table. You go from chi to p and then to your null hypothesis, okay? So the way you do that is first you need to figure out how to navigate this table. So look over here, look over here, you have degrees of freedom on both sides. So your rows are gonna be how your degrees of freedom change. So you find your, you need to find out what your degrees of freedom is. And all that is, let me write this down for you. So your degree of freedom, find a nice green, your degree of freedom is just equal to n minus one. So your number of observations minus one. Since up here we saw that we have three different grades, three different types of observations, um, three classes of observations, we have an n of three, right? Here's your new observation, new observation, new observation here. So we have an n of three minus one, so that gives us degrees of freedom so of, of two, right so we this is our row this is our man right here these are our degrees of freedom that we'll be dealing with so this is the only row we'll be paying attention to okay all right so now we need to find which which um you know which which one of these numbers we need to deal with or whatever um this is where people get a little hazy because people most of the time don't know what these numbers mean and they don't know where to go from here and this is where we lose a lot of students, okay? So if you can pay attention here and figure this out, then you are on top of the world. So for your chi-square, um, with your chi-square value, you're gonna take that, which was what? 5.2, okay? 5.2. Let's write that here, chi-square. It's 5.2. Now all you do is find out what two numbers that sits between. And then you can find your p-value. So look at these numbers, find where 5.2 fits in. So looking between these two numbers right here, you'll see that 5.2 fits here, okay? So if five, if your chi-square value is between these two numbers right here, then that actually means your p-value is going to be, be between these two numbers right here. Here, let me try to make better circles. And uh, so... Let me just reiterate that. If your chi-square value is between these two numbers in this mess, okay, then there, your p-value is gonna be between the numbers above it. You don't know the exact p-value. You don't, you don't actually, you can't actually just calculate your p-value, but you can get an idea of where it is. And that allows you to see if it's above or below this magical 0 0.05 number, right? Remember that if our p-value is less than 0.05, this is the magical thing to remember. This is how you know whether or not, based off of one number, to reject or accept your null hypothesis. So your p-value is very important. And most of the time, in most experiments, if your p-value is less than 0.05, you will reject the the null hypothesis. So what's, what is our p-value? If we know it's somewhere between 
these two numbers, sorry, that's bugging me. I'm scrolling the wrong amount there. If we know it's between these two numbers, if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 and less than 0.1, then we essentially know it's greater than 0 0.05, right? So you would write this out. So your p-value is going to be greater than 0 0.05 and less than 0.1. That's how you would write that out. So this is a little extra knowledge. If, if hopefully, if you take statistics, that'll make that this um, section this much easier. Um, but uh, for your p-value, since you know it's above there, you know it's greater than 0 0.05. So you know what to do with your null hypothesis now. So you know that you cannot reject your null hypothesis. So, so interestingly enough, even though it looks like a lot more students are doing better and more students are are and fewer students are doing. Uh, worse in the class than last year, it's not a significant enough difference to be able to assume that something else is at work here and maybe the students are too smart this year or for some reason you um, maybe some of the students are cheating or maybe you presented the material a little bit differently and it's a lot easier for students to understand. So we can't assume anything like that. So we have to we have to keep the null hypothesis. And hopefully this makes sense. This is definitely one of the harder things to get down. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask me or any of the TAs and send us an email and we'll be glad to help you out.